Hey y'all. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Patrice. If this is not your first time here, welcome back, y'all. So today we are going to be making one of those beautiful and fun yard signs. So I know sometimes we think of like the yard signs as the typical 18 by 24 signs that may be personalized. However, there are several different versions of yard signs and as of late, one of the very popular yard signs are the yard signs that says something specifically and they're personalized. So it may say happy birthday and they have the person's name in huge letters. And so that's what we are going to do today. Our yard sign today is going to be for a graduation and I'm going to show you how I turn this chloroplast board from Home Depot into this yard sign okay and so home depot has the supplies that you need they sell the boards this board actually came in i think it was a 46 by 98 and they cut it down for me into 18 inch strips and now i am going to cut each of these boards into 24 inches and you can get out of the 48 by 96 you can get about if you are doing regular yard signs you can get about 12 of those yard signs out of one board so there's so many ways that you could use this chloroplast and i'm just going to show you one way i will also be using some permanent vinyl to just make it a little more colorful and I will be using a box cutter to cut the chloroplast in the shape of the letters. All right, so let's get, ready to get started. In addition, these stakes can be found also at Home Depot and they're very reasonable. Now, you can find this on Amazon. I will have a link to pre-cut chloroplast. However, I find that it's a lot cheaper when I buy the big board and I cut it down myself. All right, but I'm super excited about this. This is for my cousin's graduation celebration, and I can't wait for her to see it when she drives up. All right, y'all, let's get started. Okay, y'all, so we are going to start inside of Cricut Design Space. I have already cut out a few of the letters, so I am going to walk you through the process of sizing and cutting these out because these letters are larger than a Cricut mat. Okay, so this works better if you are able to use a 12 by 24 mat because our letters are going to be 18 by 24, or at least we are going to be cutting them on an 18 by 24 board. And so I am going to just size this letter. I am using Bright Star and Bright Star, I got this from, I believe, Creative Fabrica. I will have a link to the font that I'm using today. So right now I just need to go up here. I want to make sure this is, and I am going to unlock the 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 font or the the letter because the size is not going to be proportionate okay so the height i want to make the height 23.5 and the width i'm going to make that 18 inches okay and so this is what we have so far and sometimes with certain letters you may want to maybe make it 17 inches wide or you may want to make it 22 inches high, it depends. But for me, every letter that I'm doing, I'm trying to make it as close to 24 inches high as possible, all right? So here we have the 18 by 23 and a half, and this is not going to be able to be cut on any Cricut mat, for the simple fact is, is that it's too wide. Cricut can only cut uh, mats that are 12 inches wide. So what I'm going to do, I am going to use the slice method and I am going to go over here to shapes and I am going to select square. 
I like to turn the square a different color so that when the slice results appear, I know exactly what I need to get rid of. All right, so I am just going to, again, unlock that. And I try to make sure that it's in the halfway mark of the letter. So that way, when we piece this together on the coroplast, it, it lines up easily. Okay, so I'm just going to put this right here in the center where that star, and these stars give me kind of a guide of where it should be placed. All right, so here we have our square. And so I am going to select both the A and the square, okay? So if I go down here, I can select it from here. And as you guys can see, there is like a caution uh, symbol here. And anytime you get that caution symbol, something's wrong. And your, your project won't be able to be cut or made. And so when you click onto it, it just says here, image is too large, reduce the size to an 11 and a half by 23.5. So that's something that we just discussed. And so I'm going to select here and then I'll go back up to the top and also select the square. As you see, the square has that caution symbol as well. Now you can select both items that way. If you go up and you select the square and then you press shift and select the next image that you want to combine. But you can also just highlight them both and you selected them. Now in order to slice, you can only slice two images at a time. Okay, so this is perfect. So now you're going to go over here to the panel on the right and you are going to select slice. And so that just sliced the A in half. And so you want to move all of the pieces that you don't need. So you don't need this piece right here. And if you look over in the right panel, you can see your slice result. So there's another slice result right here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete that because we don't need it. And you, once you move the other part of the A, you'll find that other slice result. Okay, and so I'm going to delete that because we don't need this either. All right, and so now I have the A that we are going to cut out and we are going to piece that together. All right, I'm going to show you all how I set it up on the board and what I do just to get this cut out so that we can get ready and place it onto the coroplast. Today I will be using Oracle 651 vinyl as well as Caesar PSV vinyl that I purchased from Michaels and I'm just using my tape measure to measure the vinyl so that I can cut it in 24 inch increments and waste as little vinyl as possible. And now I'm going to place the vinyl onto the mat and I like to place it sideways so that it lines up a little bit better whenever I try to press it from the top going down, I'm always off. So this way works really, really good for me. Also, this mat has been used quite often, and so I want to make sure that I use my brayer to make sure that the vinyl is secure onto this mat prior to placing it for cutting. Now we're all set, and we are ready to load the first part of the A into the machine. And so we are just going to load this and press go. So the first side is done cutting and now it's time for us to load the mat so that we can get the other half of the A cut. And it's just the same procedure, load this into the machine and press go. And we will be ready to weed this out and place it onto our coroplast. All right, y'all. So both of the pieces for the A have been cut. And all I need to do is take the vinyl off of the cutting mat. And you always want to make sure you are peeling the cutting mat away from the vinyl. And now we are going to get ready to weed. There is some vinyl that I can save 
So I do want to just look at it and cut out the pieces that I can kind of salvage and use for other projects. So I'm going to get ready and cut this. But I do want to apologize for part of the video being a little bit blurry. I think I missed and adjusted the lens by mistake on the camera. So sorry y'all. All right, so this is looks like the right side of the A, and so now I'm just going to check the other side and see how much vinyl I can salvage, and not that much, but I want to salvage it. So this roll from Michaels, of course, I'm working last minute, so I ended up going to Michaels and getting a roll because it's super quick. I need to have this done for tomorrow. <clears throat> and this roll was about $25. It's a 15 foot roll. It's Oracle 651. Caesar also um, now makes a, a vinyl that I, I like. I used it for some of the other letters, but they were out. So now we are just going to simply weed the vinyl. So here are the two pieces, and I am going to show you all how I place it onto the coroplast. All right, so we'll just end up piecing them together. Of course, this line won't be there, and we just have to be very careful with how we piece it together. So for this bubble, I'm just going to pop it, and I'll probably pop it in another few places just to kind of get that air out. and you just push it down okay that was a pretty pretty nice size bubble so it did cost a little bit of creasing in that area so next we are going to apply the other half of the a so now i'm going to get ready to apply the transfer tape and i'm going to apply it from the bottom and kind of roll it down i want to prevent as much air from being trapped underneath the transfer tape and the vinyl lettering you know what, guys i usually for that second half i like to kind of keep the backing on for a little bit so i'm going to keep the backing on right here so for the side that I'm piecing together, I usually like to just expose a little bit of the vinyl or the adhesive on the back just for placement purposes. And then once I have it placed on the coroplast in the exact location that I want it to be in, then I peel the back off. So make sure you get rid of anything that's on that floor. Hair sheds all the time, so you don't really want it on your board, or you don't you don't want it to get underneath your vinyl because you are going to be cutting around it. Okay, so we are going to get ready to line this up, and this is for the most part how I line it up. I kind of hold the adhesive or the the transfer tape up a little bit prior to me actually placing it, but I find. Like those sharp edges just in case I need to lift it up fairly quickly like that looks uh -oh, it moved. that looks like that's about on and then we are going to just make sure this one is on as well it looks like it is but i do feel like part of this one may be up just too much just a little bit but nothing Definitely, definitely nothing our 
box cutter can't fix. And then once I have it down, then I take the back and then I start to peel it off. It's really not this difficult. It's just because how I'm, see, I think I got a, a air pocket in there because it's how I'm standing with the, um, with the camera. But for the most part, that's how I get it on and to line up good. I do have a few little air pockets you guys are going to see over here. And you don't really want to lift it up because then you start stretching. You start to stretch your, your vinyl. And that you don't want to do. Alright, so I have a little bit of a pocket right here. It's fine. I'm just going to kind of massage that air out as much as possible to reduce the the actual pocket. And for these there's like little ridges. So if you go towards the ridges, that kind of helps to release some of that air underneath. So I am just going to get some of this air out and pop some of these bubbles to make sure that it is smooth. But I do want you all to know, I should have mentioned this when I was first placing these down. You want to make sure your letter is going in the direction of the grooves within the coroplast. So you want those grooves to be up or down. This makes a big difference when you are sticking the stakes in because if you do it going from left to right, you won't have the openings to place the stakes. So those grooves need to be going up and down and your letter needs to be going in the direction of those grooves up and down. Right. So far, this is our A and this is what it looks like. And so now we are going to get ready to cut around it with the box cutter. All right, y'all. So now we are going to get ready to use our box cutter and trim around the edges of the letters. And this, you kind of just can do like a nice little score around and then end up going a little deeper. And that's what we will start. I'm going to start over here at the bottom. And you definitely want to be careful when doing this. So you kind of, uh -oh. there's two layers of this. I don't know if you guys can see how thick it is. So you definitely have to dig in a bit deeper to get it done. I usually don't do this here at this table, but for the purpose of us today, that's what we will be doing. And you just go all the way around. Okay, so we are all set with our A and I trimmed the edges. However, I could have did a better job with trimming the edges, but it's, I mean, it's okay. It's just for us to use for tomorrow. If you are doing these, you can, I don't know if I said it before, but you can rent these signs out because they can be a little costly when you're making these and using vinyl and you don't want them to go to waste so you can rent them out. I've seen several companies renting these out for $75 to $120 for the day. Okay, so, but this is what we have. And if you, I'm not sure if you guys can really tell, but there's little holes in between the front part of the coroplast and the back part of the coroplast. And so, there's little pockets that it creates and so those pockets will be where we insert the end of the stakes okay so i am just going to just try to center it on the stakes 
and I see two holes that I could use and you just push it down. I try to push it as far as possible. And then of course you adjust it as you place these in your yard. All right, so this is how you create one of these signs. I will continue with the rest of the letters and then I am going to show you all how I use pictures also and that way we can kind of decorate the sign a little bit more, all right? All right, y'all, so I printed this on my regular printer and I tiled the pages in Adobe Illustrator to get it to print this way. So now I am going to piece together this puzzle and I am just trimming the edge off of one side of that of this image so that I can place it down onto the other part of the image. The only thing that I can say is for the next time I do one of these like this, I am probably going to find another way because while you can piece it together perfectly, once you place it down on top of the other piece, it causes a hump in the image wherever it meets. And that hump I do not like. It does, it is noticeable. So I would probably maybe try using maybe Teflon to keep it down and then laminating on top of it once I have it pieced together on the Teflon. Maybe that would work, but I do, that's something that I would have to kind of try a little bit more because I do want to place um, laminate on top of this image. So to place this on, I'm just going to peel away a small part of the backing on the picture the same way like how I do the vinyl just to get it to match up as best as possible. And that is what it'll look like. But I don't want to have too much of it exposed just in case we have a mistake. So I'm going to match up the picture. If you use a wide format picture, you don't really have to worry too much about um, piecing things together. I am printing or I printed this out on eight and a half by 11. And so that's just not a large, a large print. But I could have avoided this had I printed this on my wide format. But this is what we have. And as you see, it matches up great. It looks great. The problem is, is when I press that laminate on top, it does become a lot more noticeable um, that it is meeting there. But other than that, it looks great so far. So I'm going to speed up the video, but I just want you all to see how I continue to piece together this picture. So now I'm getting ready to place the laminate on top so that I can press it. And this is a laminate laminate roll. However, it's not wide. I think it's about 12 inches wide and our picture is slightly larger than 12 inches. So I am going to see the best way of me to place this on with having to piece it together. Okay, typically you don't want to have to piece your laminate together, but in this case, I don't have any uh, laminate that is wider than 12 inches. And so I'm just going to try to make sure that those two pieces kind of match up as closely as possible and probably have the slightest of overlaps to prevent it from being too noticeable. So I'm going to, once I've, I'm done putting this together, I'm going to press this under my heat press for about 10 seconds at about 320 degrees. Nothing too high and really 10 seconds is probably more 
time than it really needs. All right, so now we are under the press and we are getting ready to press this picture. I do have the pieces taped together with a little bit of heat tape because I don't want it to shift or anything. So I'm going to press the first half and I'm only pressing it for 10 seconds. And let's see, it looks pretty good. I do see a few little bubbles that I'm going to use my scraper to kind of scrape those bubbles away. You want to do that while it is still hot. If you wait until it's cold, you will not be able to, to do that. So I'm gonna press the second half and the color looks good as you see the color looks good and this isn't even sublimation this was just with the the laminate this is a regular print so everything looks great and i'm just going to knock some of those bubbles out all right y'all so we are all done and it looks pretty good so we have our core class board and we are ready to place this on so I am just going to apply this on the chloroplast the same way that I do the vinyl. And I'm just peeling the back of that sticker paper. And I forgot to mention that it was actually sticker paper that I was using, a matte sticker paper that I was using for this picture. But I just peeled the back off. And so now I am going to slowly take the back off while rubbing the portion that is sticking onto the chloroplast because I want to avoid having any bubbles underneath. And so as I take that paper off, I will just rub it down on the other side. You guys can't really see that, but this is what I'm doing on the other side as I am peeling that paper off from the back, just smoothing out anywhere that I may feel any bubbles or anything like that. Now again, remember there is an overlap and that when, once I pressed it with the laminate, that overlap became a little more noticeable, not as far as any discoloration or anything, but just where I'm pressing, that's where the, the overlap is. And you can kind of see a slight bulge wherever the sticker paper is overlapping. So next time I'll possibly just put this onto the Coroplast and um, prior to laminating and just testing to see if my mini press with light heat would apply um, the laminate or maybe just uh, spray it with some um, outdoor sealer or so, but I don't see that this, I really would want something to protect it like the laminate or something um, because this is just regular sticker paper. And once I'm done placing this onto the chloroplast, I am going to get my box cutter and trim around the edges and I will be ready to then put this yard sign out for my cousin's graduation celebration. All right guys, so this is the yard sign that we made. I think it came out really, really good. And there are some things like maybe some balloons or something I could have added, but for the most part, I am pleased. And the graduate is also pleased. So that's it y'all, until next time.